Okay, so we're going to take a look at color in HTML. We'll start with a basic HTML document. And then if you remember from our first document, you can do BG color equals something like red. And then if we open that in our browser, we get this very red background. Okay, so that's probably not the best color choice, but you get the idea. There's a bunch of different ways that you can handle color. All of the kind of common color names that you know can go into these fields that are looking for colors. But that only gets you a few colors. What we really want to look at are different ways of doing color. And so to do that, we need to learn what's called the hexadecimal system. So hexadecimal is a base 16 system. So normally our numbers go 0 to 9. There's 10 digits that can go in any spot which means we have 10 possible numbers. That's base 10 or decimal. Hexadecimal means we have 16 digits that can go in any spot. Of course, we only have 0 to 9. And so in hexadecimal, you can go 1 through 9. And that gives us 10 digits because we have the 0. And then 11 would be A, 12 is B, 13 is C, 14 is D, 15 is E, and 16 is F. So you have 16 possible numbers. So if you wanted to write the number 16 in hexadecimal, you would just write F. If you wanted to write the number 11, you'd write A. If you write 1, 1, that's not 11. That's a 1 in the 16's place. Um, so we get 16 plus one more. This is how you write 17 in decimal. It's a little bit confusing to do that kind of conversion. Unfortunately, you don't actually have to do it yourself. But the key is that you have two digits representing each color. Two digits for red, two digits for green, and two digits for blue. And that's because when you're creating colors, they're created by combinations of red, green, and blue together. It was different than the primary colors that you learned for combining paint in elementary school. This is actually how we combine light if you look at an old school TV, if you put like a drop of water on it, you can see that it's actually made up of red, green, and blue stripes for each pixel. You can probably see that on your monitor now, depending on what kind of monitor you have. Doing different levels of red, green, and blue gives you different colors. If you want to find out some colors to use, we can just do a search for hexadecimal color picker. Thank you for correcting my spelling, Google. And here we can start to see some examples. Uh, so we have a palette of colors here. And if we mouse over, let's pick this blue at the top. We see there's a hexadecimal value here. You can see it broken down. There's a red, a green, and a blue. This is in normal decimal based format, 153. But if you represent that in hexadecimal, it's a 99. And we can see a bunch of different colors here. And these are the hexadecimal versions. The first two digits are how much red, the second two are how much green, and the third two are how much blue. They generally start with a hashtag at the beginning. So this is one way that we can pick, it, pick this. If we search for another one, here we get a much smoother gradient. So we can slide up and down to pick the hue. So let's do like a purple, and we can move around to pick the exact shade. It's shown in the box over here, and the hexadecimal code is shown at the top. So let's do a kind of light purple. We're going to copy that color, and then we can come back to our document and put that in as the color here. You should put the hashtag at the beginning. It will work if you leave it off. And so if we save this text now, and we go back to our test.html, now you can see we have that color in the background. So I've given you a little bit of background about the color. You'll see that there's a document linked up on the web page for today that explains color and the hexadecimal system a little more deeply. But what I have that's most important is links to these hexadecimal color picker pickers where you can choose a color. This one you'll see also has some nice features where it shows you some other colors that might go with it. But you can also find color pickers in a lot of other tools that you might normally use.
For example, if I switch over to Photoshop, this is a document that I was just working on for a research project and I was making some different badges. And so say I want to make the background color match the color of this badge. I can click on the color picker down here and then click on that color and you can see it gives me a hexadecimal coloring for that. Most tools now, if they let you choose colors, will provide you with a hexadecimal description. So we can copy that hexadecimal code, plunk that in here, and now if we go back to our test page and reload it, we get that teal in the background. So you can use these colors all over the place in HTML. For example, we could do a font tag and color equals and right now the color if we peek back there is black we could make it white white happens to be the maximum of everything so six F's and then end our font tag and if we save that and reload now we can see our text showing up in white now this is not really the favored way to do color anymore We've used the font tag, the BG color attribute, but really you're supposed to handle color with style sheets at this point. In the last lesson for this class, we're gonna focus a lot on style sheets. In the meantime, I'm gonna give you a little thing that you can use with styles that will allow you to have some of the benefits of putting in color without learning bad practices. So we have the font tag here, and instead we can replace that with the span tag. The span tag itself doesn't do anything. It just identifies a span of text. Basically, it lets you label a section of text, and it allows you to put in style sheets attributes. Style sheets were created to basically separate the visual appearance of the page from the structure of the page. So we're just defining a section of the page, and then we're going to use some code instead of the color attribute that lets us put in style sheets. So we say style equals, and you can use that in basically any tag to apply some style sheets. And we'll do color colon, the same thing that we just had. If we refresh that, you can see it looks the same. We still have the white text, but now we're doing this in a CSS cascading style sheets way. We use a span tag, we put style equals, this is a cascading style sheets attribute for color, and then we have a colon and the color after that. 